more information to the extent that we're going to get any more information from this massacre in uh, northern Gaza that took place uh, yesterday, the day before, uh, you know, depending on, I guess, how you're uh, calculating uh, the hours. Um, well, I mean, they've killed almost all of the journalists there and many of the journalists had to flee. This is by design, by the way, so that they can say Hamas run health ministry says X, which discredits it. If they wanted, there could be reporters in there who were able to document this. But this is explicitly what Israel does not want. And um, it, the all the U.N. agencies have said that they were not involved in this food distribution. Um, want to uh, play a couple of clips about this and then talk about a piece that was written one week ago uh, in um, Axios, I think it was, of all uh, places. Uh, but uh, here is Channel, uh, Channel 4 in uh, Britain speaking with Lieutenant Colonel Peter Lerner, IDF spokesperson, as to whether Israel takes any responsibility for the over 100,000 Palestinians killed um, after they uh, fired into the crowd. A uh, hundred Palestinians, not 100,000. Just I'm sorry, it. over yes. 100 Palestinians killed. Yeah. Um, a thousand uh, injured in some fashion or another. And it's fascinating the way this is being reported in, in some of the print media. There's a lot of talk about chaos. Oh, yes. Um and I'm just trying to like, you know, like in the headlines. Now, yes, I'm sure there was chaos there. There was chaos the moment that aid trucks came in because you have a uh, population that 25 percent of which is on the brink of famine, full on famine. They're starving uh, to death. Particularly in northern Gaza. Um, it's even uh, worse there. Um, and. Uh, well, here is the um, uh, the the. IDF spokesperson. Also know this, his Assistant accent. Colonel. He's not a British person for the Israel Defense Forces. Lieutenant Colonel, eyewitnesses say that more than 100 Palestinians died when Israeli soldiers fired on numerous occasions into a crowd. Do you take responsibility for those deaths? No, of course not, because those claims are blatantly lies. Um, the IDF conducted a humanitarian operation this morning in order to ass assist and facilitate the movement of su food supplies, as we have been doing if, over the last four days, in similar in a similar manner. Um, the supplies went in, passed through our our positions, and then continued to move forward. Where a mob stormed the the um, the convoy, bringing it to at some stage to a halt. But in the state of chaos on the site. People were being pushed, uh, trampled, and in some cases run over. When you say uh, the mob, IDF... do you mean starving people who have been deprived of food because you haven't let the aid in? The UN officials told us that no aid has been allowed into northern Gaza for more than a month. The UN obviously aren't up to date on their information. The last four days, uh, convoys like we conducted this morning, uh, this morning was 38 truckloads. Uh, passed into northern Gaza to distribute food supplies, which are international donations, um, but on private vehicles that were conducting the convoy into northern Gaza. Well, so there, the, multiple the, the agencies say some and, aid and, is yeah. going in, but not nearly enough. And you spoke of a mob. I want to put to you what Save the Children said. They said, while children die from lack of food, their parents are killed trying to get it for them. That's the reality, isn't it? These are starving people, desperate for anything they can get their hands on. Kathy, the incident at the on the convoy this morning uh, was nothing to do with Israel. The IDF secured the convoy, it went through, and it got out of hand on the ground as people were looting the trucks. Pause it for it one second. I just like, I want to point out like how Oof. far these guys had to move in the context of this one interview. Everything that you hear about this is a lie. Then to um, uh, Israel has nothing to do with this, except for the fact that they were there shooting on uh, people, that um, they were a mob as if this was like some type of like a uh, looting situation, you know, after uh, um, after, uh, you know, the, the Super Bowl or something. Um, it, it's 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 stunning. 
I mean, I mean the, it's incredible. It, it, they're using language like we, you know, was referred to the victims of Hurricane Katrina. I mean, they're looting. They're, they're, they're. Why are some people desperate? Right? They're being starved to death. And the idea that this is looting, this is aid. This is not like a a a, a store. This is uh, food that is being delivered humanitarianly, and people are cl- crawling all over each other because there's just not enough aid coming in. Israel's turning away the majority of the aid trucks for little things like medical kits having scalpels in them. That's what Jeff Merkley said on Democracy Now! the other day. He went there firsthand to the Rafa, Rafa crossing because that has a sharp edge. They're turn- And then they don't let the rest of the truck come through they turn the entire truck around if it has anything the Israeli Defense Forces deem to be dangerous, like a scalpel. Um, uh, continue with this. I mean, the 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 news host is doing a good job, at least, yeah. of uh, you know making this guy account for what he's talking about. And it got out of hand on the ground as people were looting the trucks. The yeah, but trucks your troops fired. Support. Your troops fired shots. No, there were warning shots fired, and then when it got out of hand. The forces retreated back into the formation along the um, the Gaza Wadi area. It was that was not true. That is just a blatant lie. That is absolutely inaccurate. So why do you think people are so angry then? I think there is a lot of things that are going on in these days, and of course there is a dire situation in the Gaza Strip, a human tragedy, and that is precisely why we are facilitating humanitarian actions like this morning or the airdrops of supplies into uh, Gaza, both in the north and in the south, or the continued access and movement through Rafa or through uh, Kerem Shalom crossing. Of course, there's a lot of frustration. There's a lot of frustration precisely because Hamas launched the war on the 7th of October. All right. was I don't wanna, uh, we don't Gaza. need to hear any more about this. The idea of like a uh, frustration when you're talking about literally one of the most um, devastating sort of, uh, um, actions of conscious starvation of a population. Um, here is a video that, 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 that shows um, uh, I-24's uh, News English Twitter account posted a uh, video from uh, presumably, I guess, from a, a drone of some yeah. sort, uh, some type the of aerial IDF, footage. The IDF uh, put this out there, too. I don't know why they thought this made them look good, by the way. This is um, basically you're watching um, starving people running to trucks. So, yeah, there's no sound, but perhaps they put this out because you it lo- almost looks like they're ants or you can't see their faces. But this is what the reality is here. People are just uh, running uh, desperately to try and get um, uh, food, food. I mean, this is kind of useful in the point of view from the Israeli military where they have this advanced weaponry and you can see how precise they're able to be um and we just know and here's the thing they can um, deliberately target anybody yeah go on this is uh a piece uh, from axios from february 24th u.s officials say they are increasingly concerned that quote gaza is turning into mogadishu Mogadishu, uh, of course, is the capital of Somalia, and um, it was uh, back in, I guess, the, was it 90s? I mean, maybe people remember this Black Hawk Down uh, um, the, uh, episode where um, there was such um, chaos and uh, lawlessness um, and uh, uh, desperation that um, it was impossible for uh, U.S. military, I think, uh, were basically attacked there. And um, the uh, because there was absolutely no order. It was just a, a, a series of of gangs. Now, when they're talking about this, um, uh, this happening in, in Mogadishu, I don't think the, the issue is quite a, a question of of ga- roving gangs at this point, but rather no ability, no structure, no societal structure whatsoever, and incredibly desperate people. 
there has been a, and this was a week ago, there's been a significant decrease in the number of aid trucks entering Gaza in recent weeks, as according to the UN Humanitarian Aid Office, OCHA. On at least four days in the last two weeks, less than 10 aid trucks entered the enclave. Um, And this is the issue. UN Humanitarian Coordinator for the Palestinian Territory, James McGoldruck, told reporters this this week that members of the Hamas-run civilian police force had been operating in Rafah and on the Gaza side of the nearby Karem Shalom crossing to ensure security for the aid trucks. But they left their posts earlier this month after being targeted by Israel. At least 11 members of the police force in Rafah. And this is just the police force. The, the, the reality is, is that Hamas is also the government there, or at least providing services to the extent that, you know, we can sort of draw a parallel. And the civilian police force is being targeted by the Israelis. I mean, uh, I don't know any more necessarily than civilians, but certainly 11 members at least of the police force in Rafah have been killed in Israeli airstrikes in recent weeks, is according to U.S. officials. This opened the way for uh, armed gangs to take control of the aid and also providing, and I don't see, you know, you can see that aerial footage. It doesn't look like there's armed gangs there. It looks like there are people running desperately to get the, the food aid and that Israel created no apparatus in which to distribute the aid because they're not allowing uh, organizations like you, uh, uh, the, the UN or others to do their jobs. And that's the aid that gets in too right as i said a great majority of it is getting turned away um and then it's at least based on the numbers that we've had for the past few weeks perhaps i mean i could only pray the biden administration is attempting to pressure them on this matter but it doesn't seem to be uh, like well well, we can we can dip into that in a moment but as the result of the security vacuum many of the trucks uh, that have recently entered gaza have been overrun uh in part at least by Palestinians desperate for any kind of aid as the conditions in the enclave continue to increasingly deteriorate and hunger grows. Um, The hopelessness and desperation in Gaza have created, quote, a great deal of law and order challenges that's affecting our ability to do the work, uh, work here, McGoldrick said. Getting aid to northern Gaza has been especially difficult. Ucha is hoping Israel will open a a crossing in the north so aid trucks can directly access the areas in most need of supplies. And it did. But of course, there's no apparatus there in which to distribute the aid. And Israel has created this sort of chaotic scene and then decided to shoot into it. Yep. I mean, we know what the point is. (laughs) We know what the point is at this at this juncture. That they want Um, as many people dead as possible. And I just want to say famine in the modern society, hunger, it's a policy choice. Always. It's a political uh, choice. uh, Without a doubt. In any of these uh, contexts. But this is. Yeah. yeah, It's been weaponized. Yep. All right. We're going to talk to Digby in a uh, moment more about these sort of like a domestic political implications of this and the attempts to uh, pressure the Biden administration to do something uh, other than bemoan their helplessness uh, in this. Uh, We will get to that in just a moment. And, uh, you know, one of the big uh, uh, elements of that is these uh, in Washington state is one of the biggest unions in the country. um, I should say in the state, the biggest unions in the state, the uh, local chapter of uh, of a national uh, union uh, has come out and said they're going to endorse uncommitted. We'll talk about that in a minute. 